I'd like to introduce you to In His Hands, a new Easter cantata produced by Soundforth. This cantata is a combination of music, drama, and artwork from the Bob Jones University Museum and Gallery. I'm here with Kurt and Larry, co-producers, to explain the concept. The project came about when Aaron Jones contacted us in our office about the use of some of the museum and gallery masterworks in a cantata project. So Rick and I, we sat down together and talked through about some possibilities and since the museum and galleries asked for these certain seasonal projects like Easter and Christmas, we thought it might work to have a cantata. When they came to me and asked me would I be willing to be involved in a story that would tell the gospel with art gallery paintings, I said yes. The question would be then, what's the starting point? I thought of favorite paintings of mine that might feature the face of Christ or the eyes of Jesus in a certain uh, scene from the, from the scriptures. And then through the process of searching through the gallery, I came across one of my own favorite paintings that featured an, an element of the gospel that I hadn't heard featured before, and that is the hands of Jesus. And the painting that specifically caught my attention was Praetis, Christ Seats the Child in the Midst of the Disciples, where the hands seem to tell the story there. One hand of Jesus is pointed to his father, glorifying God. The other hand is reaching out toward a child to say, come, have faith. And that became a, a song in the cantata, the first song, The Faith of a Child. That painting also served as the springboard for the narrator, the major narrator of the, of the cantata, somebody with simple childlike faith who just follows Christ and believes him for what he says, trusts him implicitly. And that's the kind of faith any of us could have, Jesus said, unless you have faith like a little child, you'll not uh, see the kingdom of heaven. So that's the central core of the story. At the initial meeting with the Soundforth team and David Burke, we all sat around a table and just got an overview of the storyline for the script and looked at a rough outline of the paintings that would be used and the themes for the songs and assigned different roles. And I remember leaving that meeting feeling very excited about the project and just really thrilled to be able to work on a gospel presentation that had the potential for the Lord to use in people's lives. One of the unique features of this cantata is that we selected two composers to write the music. I've loved James Kortz's music for years. He has a unique ability to t craft a new melody that is very, very singable. The other composer is Molly Imes young gifted writer who adds her own unique style to this project. This was my first experience at writing cantata music and I found it to be a very enjoyable experience. Usually with choral anthems you can set your own atmosphere but for a cantata the music is inserted somehow in the events of the story and um, one of the things I enjoyed about it was studying the script and seeing the, the different atmosphere that each choral anthem would fit into. When Molly and I got together to talk about the music for The Darkest Hour, she mentioned that she wanted the music to have a very heavy feel and be very melancholy. Because at that point in the script, the disciples are grieving over the death of Christ and they don't really understand that he's going to be raised from the dead. So the lyrics needed to reflect a lot of grief and they actually ended up also reflecting the grief that Christ himself felt at being forsaken by his Father on the cross. My favorite piece and the one I composed first was The Darkest Hour. Um, when I begin a piece, I usually make a list of words that describe that poem and what it means to me. And I think this poem probably connected um, the most to me because it felt very heavy, um, very sad, intense and in some ways very hopeless. Um, David Burke, when he, when he wrote the script, he intended a line to come after the darkest hour, and it's Jude's, um, his observation of what it would have been like to watch Christ die on a cross. And I took the liberty of moving his line into the middle those of the piece. Things. Holes clean through those very hands that had held the little children not many days ago. How did it come to this? I remember the morning I wrote that and just coming to the realization again that Christ's death was for me and I couldn't help but shed tears over that. Just the feeling that of the guilt of my sin and how Christ 
willingly paid this price for me. I worked on the lyrics for The Darkest Hour through most of an evening, and I remember it was snowing outside that evening, and I just stayed in and worked on the song the entire evening, and I was so weary. By the time it was time to go to bed, I was just tired from thinking these dark, heavy thoughts. And I woke up early the next morning and the sun was shining and I went outside to see the snow. And it was like the whole world was just sparkling. And it sort of made me think about the song in a different way. And I realized even though this was a grievous, heartbreaking experience for Christ on the cross, it, the song also needed to include an element of hope. Christ was forsaken by His Father on the cross, but because of that, we as believers will never be forsaken in our darkest hour. When it came to choosing a painting to depict the central, the climactic scene of the Gospel, the crucifixion, uh, one painting stood out, I think, of anybody that comes to the gallery. We have a Rubens called Christ on the Cross that, to my mind, captures the, the pathos the agony of the moment more vividly than other paintings that I can think of. This work of art is called Christ on the Cross and it's by Peter Paul Rubens who is well known as Mr. Baroque there in the 17th century. And he's done at least two interesting things with this painting. The first one is an innovation there with the cross and how Christ is positioned. He has his arms raised in victory rather than flat across the plane of the bar there. The second feature is the skull, which is in this setting is referencing Adam, who through his sin, all humanity then became sinners. So it references Adam and his death, but then in comparison it shows Christ, who is the second Adam, and through his death we have life and eternal salvation. The difference between this cantata and most cantatas is the addition of the visual element. As the drama unfolds before you on the stage, exquisite master works of art are displayed on the screen, which adds a new dimension to the cantata. Sometimes I imagine how it must have been to watch Jesus, the little boy, helping out in the wood shop. Another painting I came to for the variety of it is the Holy Family in the Carpenter Shop, where a narrator is able to imagine, at least for a moment, what would Jesus have been like as a little boy, I think. What was his faith like as a child? I wanted this piece to feel that warm welcome that we have in the arms of our Heavenly Father.